Hi, today we're going to talk about phases of matter. And there are three phases of matter. They are, this will be a review I hope, solid, liquid, gas. Now the phases of matter are determined by the position of the atoms in relation to one another. So I'm going to start from the coolest end and make it to the warmest end. And I'm going to draw what is called a phase diagram. And a phase diagram is just basically a diagram that shows how individual atoms or molecules are looking. So in a solid, the particles, either the atoms or the molecules, are the closest together. And typically it is in a crystalline or a lattice structure. Again, it's like a crystal or a lattice, which in other words means it's like, it looks like scaffolding. All the molecules are closest together in a solid. They are also moving very, very, very slowly. So in a solid, they're kind of just vibrating back and forth. As you add, as you increase the temperature or add energy, they're going to rearrange, and this is a physical change, and it is going to become a liquid. If you notice here, I have nine particles. Right here, I also have nine particles. This is the liquid phase. Solid, liquid, and again, add more energy, and these particles are going to be increasing in speed. Also, the amount of distance between them is going to increase. Solid, liquid, gas. A couple of things. Number one, a solid has a definite shape and a definite volume. Something that you can think of that's a solid, look right here. A liquid has a definite volume, but an indefinite shape. In fact, this is the liquid. Inside this container, it takes the shape of the container. Now once it becomes a gas or a vapor, it has an indefinite volume and an indefinite shape. We're going to be talking more about phases as we progress throughout the year, but basically solid, liquid, gas. Now get out your reference tables. Turn to table S, and we're going to look at these columns, melting point and boiling point. So there is an example. I'm going to show you the example right down here. And pay attention to a specific element. Let's take lithium, for example. So I'm going to say at STP, which phase is lithium? So what you're going to do is you're going to draw a vertical line between the melting point and the boiling point for lithium. So go ahead and draw a line on your reference table, just like you see in this example right here. And the melting point for lithium is 454. The boiling point is 1615. Now once you, got, once you have this out, you have your line. Melting point, boiling point. STP is standard temperature and pressure. So standard temperature is 273 Kelvin. So where does 273 Kelvin fall if we were to look at this like a number line? Again, we have 454 and we have 1615. Where does 273 lie? It lies to the far left. So if it's to the left, that means it is a solid. Again, 273 is below the melting point. So 273 is less than the melting point. That means it's a solid. Let's look at another one. We're going to look at neon. Neon, we have solid, liquid, gas. So for neon, we have the melting point is 24 degrees. In other words, anything less than 24 degrees, it is going to be a solid. Anything above 27 degrees is going to be a gas. So between 24 and 27 degrees, neon is going to be a liquid. So at STP, where does 273 lie? Between 24 and 27. It is way, way, way over that way. So neon is going to be a gas at STP. We're going to do one more. We're going to look at bromine number 35. Bromine. Again, you're going to draw a number line. The melting point is 266. 
The boiling point is 332. Anything between 266 and 332 is going to be a liquid. So looking at your number line, where does 273 lie for bromine? Again, 266, 332, 273 is in the middle. Bromine is a liquid. A majority of all the elements on the periodic table are solids at STP. They're also solids at 25 degrees, which is room temperature. Pay attention to that. Most of the elements that are known to man are solid. Okay? Look at the practice problem. 